Hi there friends and fellow flippers. I'm Liz. I'm a part-time vintage reseller in Maryland. Welcome to my channel, Flippin' Lizzie. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Today's video is going to be a partial haul video from mainly the last couple of days, but a few things scattered from the last few weeks. Um, I'm going to try to teach you guys a few things as we go so that you'll know what to look for, for your own business or for your home. And I really do appreciate you showing up tonight and hopefully you can take a second to like, subscribe, share, and uh, maybe comment. All those things help the channel grow and I really do appreciate it. So let's get flipping here. So I'm sure that you've seen some of these things on the table. Again, this is just a partial haul from the weekend in your travels. Maybe you didn't know if they were worth a lot. Maybe you didn't know what they were called. Um, and I'm not an expert in any one area. I am definitely a Jack or maybe a Jill of all trades. But I will share with you what I do know um, and what I've learned by researching some of the pieces you know, recently, not just researching over the years. Um, for me, vintage is anything that Etsy defines as vintage because that's my online platform that I sell on. And so I believe right now it's anything earlier than 2004, which could be terrifying for you. I don't specialize in, um, you know, post-1999 vintage, but uh, it's, it's growing on me. So one piece here in the foreground that is in that category is this actually really beautiful, kind of looks like a Mexican celestial chip and dip platter. I definitely would have been drawn to this, although I think I was into this more in the 90s. I'm going to carefully turn this over with one hand. So you can see the maker on the back, uh, El Sol, which means the sun, I believe. A Peltzman design. I didn't know anything about this name. I just saw this motif. I know this has come back into favor. These spirals that we saw in the 90s and then the sun too. So even though this is a little later than the 90s, it has that sort of bohemian, earthy vibe to it. So um, these are approximately, from what I could gather, maybe like 30 to $35. So if if you're shipping and you do free shipping, like I do on Etsy, it might not be the best idea to put this one online because of that cost of the shipping. Um, but you might sell it locally or if you have a shop, something like that. Um, I cannot resist any owls. And this little macrame guy is no exception. Super cute. He's got like a little perch here and then he's structured around uh, wood at the top with wooden beaded eyes, really cute, kind of fluffy, uh, perfect for a boho or, you know, mid-century, 70s space. Um, their prices were kind of um, spread apart, but I think they probably go between 25 and 55, depending on their size and construction. The next item, oops, I almost turned my camera on you guys, still working on camera work, is this ice bucket. I don't know if people drank a lot when I was a kid or what but I always like ice buckets and I really like this sort of ice cube lucite finial on this one. Uh, it's really shiny green, kind of reminds me a little bit of the 80s with that Kelly green, but that lucite ice cube top might be a little bit earlier. I believe this is made by Bucket Brigade, which is a really cool name. Um, and they sell pretty well. I wanna say like solidly for $50 online. Um, most of these items, by the way, I did not pay a lot for. There are a few exceptions um, that I paid a decent amount for, but most of the things I did not. So the next thing I'll show you is this Daisy Crochet Blanket. And it's shocking how much these sell for. I have sold these in the past, and it seems like their price just keeps going up. I actually looked this one up to refresh my memory a little while ago, and it was about $70 online. So grab those if you see them. Easy to ship, not very breakable, but easy to sell locally too. So this next thing might be one of the bigger things I found this week. The mushroom motif is all the rage, and I believe that this is called Mary Mushroom, although there are ceramic canisters, maybe by the same name. 
And so I have a set here of four canisters. Uh, they're plastic canisters, not airtight, uh, with the matching bread box, which is pretty cool. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that bread box isn't a hobbyist piece. Uh, it looks a lot like the Merry Mushroom made by Sears Roebuck. I haven't had enough time to really investigate, but whoever the artist was, they were relatively talented, unless that's a decal, which I'll investigate later. But if that is the Sears Roebuck, Sears Roebuck, sorry, um, Merry Mushroom bread box, it's about $200 online. Now mine has some uh, visible wear, as you can see around the handle, because it was used, so it wouldn't probably bring that much. The canisters are around 100 and 125, so definitely worth finding. And I think I actually paid $15 for all of those pieces. Um, and they threw the shakers in, which are super cute. They didn't seem to have a name on them, so I'm not sure what company they're affiliated with or of their value. Since we're on the mushroom motif, I actually found these little um, like custard cups last weekend, and I think these are glass bake. I've never had these before. I love this mod. Um, motif. You see this in some enamel wear, the style with the mushrooms in different directions and just all the different patterns. Um, these have some value. It wasn't quite as high as I expected. I think a set of three or four was maybe like $35 or $40, which is great because I think I probably paid 50 cents for the three of them. Um, that's not always the case, but in this case, yes. These um, turquoise and gold thistle glasses might just stay with me because I just love them. The colors, um, just the design, it kind of reminds me of like, hold on one second, <laughs> sorry. Kind of reminds me of a woman with wild hair, <laughs> like weeping willow trees do, but it's a little hard to capture with this lighting tonight, but this is just really beautiful. I didn't find a mark on them yet to figure out who made them. Google Lens, sorry, I was doing that camera thing again. Google Lens wasn't much help. It brought up similar pieces, but not this exact pattern. And I do have eight of these, but I couldn't easily fit them on the table. Um, I didn't have to pay too, too much for those. If I did sell them just based on similar comps, I'm gonna think about 80 to $95 for the set of eight. Um, here I have four of the eight spaghetti glass roly-poly style glasses. That's when they're rounded like this. Now these don't actually wobble. They don't roll. Uh, they're in really great condition. These are the brighter of the eight. Um, there's like a more muted set in the other room. Again, it just didn't fit well on the table. Um, and probably for a set of four, I'm going to say $35, $40, something like that. Um, maybe a little more actually, but I have a set of eight, which I might sell as two sets of four um, because the shipping will be so much more safe and a little easier. Um, and maybe people don't want a set of eight of the spaghetti glass. They have that kind of plastic sticky feel on the outside, which is actually good if you don't want to spill your drink. Um, definitely, I think these are actually from the 70s, but they do remind me of the 60s. I stuck this glass in here. It's like a little Easter egg thing. If you ever see these glasses, they actually do have some value. I don't know what the value is. I can't remember because I never sell them. I have probably 15 of these, maybe more, and I've given some away to friends because they are the best glasses to drink cocktails or wine out of because they have such a nice feel in the hand. So I just stuck that in here. You know, just a, just a tip for you guys. If you see these, which you will, I think they might actually have come with like a bottle of uh, liquor at one point. Again, I researched this years ago, but I just always keep them because they feel so good in the hand. Don't tip over easily. Don't want to spill your drink. Um, I almost skipped this guy. Uh, I love single mugs. I think I might be alone in that. But how can you resist if you're from New England, which I am originally? I got smashed on Cape Cod. <laughs> I've never seen that one before. Super cute. Different. Um... That's the kind of tourist piece I can get behind. <laughs> I don't know what the value is. I didn't look that up. Uh, this is the second ceramic egg separator that I've had in a while. I suppose you could probably use it as like a luminary for like a candle, uh, but it's supposed to separate your eggs from your, um, you know, your yolks and your whites. Um, it's, I'm sure it's disgusting and kids would love it. Um, my husband would probably think it was hilarious. Um, okay, so in the back here, we have some yellow and black glasses. 
Um, I put them in a caddy that I got the thistle glasses in. And I cannot remember how to say the name of this department store that was in Baltimore, so I'm not gonna even say it. But if you're from the Baltimore area, you will recognize that name. Uh, when we see this at a state sales, like a box with this name on it, that's usually a good sign that people have hoarded things away for a long time because it's been defunct for a while. These glasses are like perfect condition. And I don't know if you bought them to give as a gift. Like, is that a thing? Like, I don't know, would we give a set of Macy's glasses now? Or if you got them as like a frequent flyer thing or even in the cafe, if you happen to know that, if you're from the area and you know something about that, can you drop a comment below and let me know if you like got these when you got lunch or when you spent a certain amount of money or did you buy them? Because in 10 years of vintage reselling, I've never seen one of these before. Um, I'm gonna stretch and hopefully not knock anything over. I really like this t-shirt. You know, you hear the resellers talk all about um, single stitch t-shirts, Hold on one second, this is gonna be awkward for both of us. <laughs> and I don't, I couldn't really find anything out about this company. Um, 15 Leagues, Sea Hunter below, no bends here. Uh, well, 15 Leagues below sea level, but I assume it's some kind of like a, not a surf shop, like a diving shop. I could not find the diving shop, so I don't know if it was like for people who were posing as divers. I don't know, but it looks 80s to me. It's a little bit longer in the back. It's got this um, split here, single stitch. I think it has a tiny little imperfection, um, a little tiny, tiny, tiny stain, and in good shape otherwise. Um, and my friend who specializes in vintage clothing, Hi Cat, she said it's probably about a $50 t-shirt. It's super soft, by the way. I'm actually gonna put it aside because it's easier than putting it back nicely. Okay, this came with the mushroom lot. It's Fitz and Floyd, so here's the thing to look for for Fitz and Floyd. I get a lot of mixed messages about Fitz and Floyd. Some of the resellers rant and rave about it, and some people don't have very good luck selling it, and some people say it chips very easily. I guess this sort of does have kind of a mushroom motif, and this does appear to be airtight. Nope, I guess not. It was just stuck. Um, so that's why it came with that Mary Mushroom set. Um, how can I turn down a freebie? Um, I do think these are decreasing in popularity, but I had a chance to buy a bunch of Alex Nani bracelets. I know some people do still collect them. Some people really love them, especially when they're stacked. So I grabbed a whole bunch of them. I don't even know how much I paid for them. Maybe like $5 or something for all of them. So I haven't, I don't think they're old enough to sell online. So I haven't decided how I'm going to market those yet. Um, but jewelry was the whole reason I got into this business. So I can't resist it usually ever. Um, these penguins are also Fitz and Floyd, and I haven't researched them. I meant to, but I forgot to. And I think the seller told me that they're supposed to be for your um, flatware at a table. Like maybe they lie flat on the table, but I just think they'd be super cute with like some dried lavender in them or something like that. Um, even like a really cute little like, I don't know, like a, a handkerchief sticking out of them or something. Anyway, maybe it toothbrush um but they're they are a little bit delicate you can tell that ceramic is a little breakable so i would be careful with them and i also do really like uh, vintage photography i have not inspected these images yet to see if they're actually i might butcher the name daguerreotypes there are a lot of vowels in that word and i've heard it pronounced different ways um which are on paper or if they're amber types which i believe are on glass However, they were awesome. I love to see the fashion. Hold on one second. I think I placed her on top of this. Look at this. I like to see what everyone's wearing, especially the jewelry actually, and try to figure out the era. You know, it's kind of fun to think, you know, what's the story? Even if some of the images are a little, what we might call ruinous, you know, they've got some visible damage. Um, I still think they're really beautiful for some reason. So. I do need to research those more, and I will. If we go to the back here, we've got, some people call it a granny square. We called it an afghan. It's a crochet blanket, really nice condition, beautiful colors. Um, I think I paid, I think I bought that at a thrift store for $6, and they usually sell locally for about 25 and online for significantly more. Um, back to these glasses. 
I don't have any idea if they're worth just to go back to those because I can't find them. Um, I may try Google Lens again to see on the off chance that they're out there somewhere. Um, but maybe one of you guys will know. Um, these are uh, Rodolfo Padilla mugs, these stacking mugs. And they were very popular, I think, in the 70s and 80s. Don't quote me on that. Uh, this color combo or colorway is one of the um, most desirable, I guess. And I've seen prices anywhere from 65 for a set with kind of muted colors to almost 200 for colors such as this. So I still have to look into that. But look for that shape. It's pretty distinctive because, let me pull out one of the mugs to show you. It's got this block-like shape, like a flat edge. Um, I've never kept any of these for myself because they were always relatively lucrative to sell. Um, but they are really beautiful. And because they stack like this, they don't take up a lot of room in your cabinet. You can put them on the counter right near your coffee maker, which is cool. Um, I have some assorted jewelry here. I probably won't go through all of it. Um, but some cute little sterling silver and abalone seahorses. A really neat sort of like celestial pin. I think that um, artist's last name is Deck, but I'll have to check on that. The wooden owl uh, brooch and earrings. Foxes are really popular, so I snatched those up. These got bumped or something, but this is a squirrel with an acorn. These are made of stone. Um, so just some, some pieces that caught my eye, and I always encourage the resellers I know to, you know, shop with your eyes. Let your eyes do the walking, and they'll stop you. Kind of like a Terminator. You know how they kind of zero in on something? That's kind of what happens. Uh, and you can train your eye even when you're at home by looking through books or watching YouTubers. Um, you can subscribe to an antiques journal that you get delivered to your home. And even if you just look through the pictures, you will train your eye over time. I always buy these vintage floral frogs. I think they're really cool looking for some reason, just to display, but I don't know where that comes from. I'm really bad with plants actually. Uh, but these are really cute if you do have photos, which of course I don't have a regular paper photo here to display photos because you can just stick them in these little um, sort of like prongs and they'll hold up the photo or a beautiful postcard or something like that. I do have a couple of copper bracelets here. I've noticed that people are passing up copper jewelry and I'm sorry, I don't recommend doing that. Um, while it's not valuable as a precious metal, as say sterling or gold, um, people do collect it and enjoy it. And you do see some nice Native American pieces in copper. So I would recommend that you do snatch those up. In the foreground here, we have a couple more pieces probably from the 70s. Um, this is a looper belt. I don't think they ever wore it. Uh, it's white tooled leather, which is unusual. It kind of has like a botanical motif. Um, and these prices range all over the place for these belts from like 25 to like $70. So I haven't found a white one yet, which maybe is a good thing. Sometimes not finding it isn't good, but I think in this case it might be because um, it's more rare. And it appears to be sort of new old stock, never used. Um, okay, so this pretty piece, I don't always buy stuff like this, but I've really been into this bohemian vibe lately. And I just thought it was actually really well done. Um, just appealing to a wide range of people. So I picked this up. Um, this piece of pottery over here, I always go for these glazes. I can't help myself. This reminded me of Bill Campbell. It is not Bill Campbell. Um, his signature is distinctive in that it's almost incredibly illegible. Um, it looks like a giant scribble across the bottom. And he does tend to do more of like a, like a drip glaze where it actually drips down the sides. But he does do a lot of these bluish glazes. Um, and not iridescent, but like these kind of like almost tie-dye melty colors. So I almost always pick up art pottery if the price is right. Uh, it's sort of fail safe. I could not read the signature on the bottom of this. It's actually pretty heavy, um, but it looks familiar. And you can join groups online and you can post very good, clear photos following all the group rules. Um, and they can probably help you identify it if the Marks Project, which is a website where you can identify pottery signatures, isn't helpful. There are kind people out there who know more than we do, who will help you decide, is this a $20 piece that I'm gonna sell locally, or maybe I'm giving it as a gift, or is this worth hundreds and I should try to sell it online? Um, so anyway, 
Uh, in the foreground here, I've got a rotary phone. Some people find it hilarious and will literally laugh if you post these in a Facebook group for sale, but then there are a ton of people who want to buy them. Um, white is a great color. It needs to be cleaned up. I didn't get a chance to do that, but on Etsy, they're like 60 to a hundred dollars for the white phones. And if you can find turquoise or red, and I think yellow is really hot now ever since uh, Stranger Things came out because they had a yellow phone in their kitchen. I noticed it because I just sold one just like it. Um, so anyway, better or brighter colors are more popular. Like I've never seen an orange one. I don't even know if they made one. Uh, but like the turquoise and reds, those go for really good money, maybe a couple hundred dollars. Uh, so look out for rotary phones and let them laugh all they want. And you can laugh all the way to the bank. Um, plants are really in vogue. Uh, that's sad for me in some ways because I can't really keep many of them alive. But these little watering um, cans are really popular in all different shapes and metals and uh, materials. And I love the shape of this one and couldn't leave it behind. Um, and that brass look is in, so I was happy to grab that and hopefully find it a new home. I don't know if they bring a ton of money in this type of form. This is probably maybe like a $20 item online, maybe a little bit more and less locally, but I can't leave it behind if it's, you know, 50 cents or something. This is actually the cap to a decanter, but I love that it had French on it. And I believe that this is, um, you know, I don't really speak French fluently, but you know, I do Duolingo. Uh, so this is, you know, voila is like, here it is. Here it is, the games are on, or the games have begun or something like that. And that's what they say when they, um, when they start a game, I guess maybe for craps or something or roulette, but I don't know why you'd have dice for roulette. But anyway, I think I read somewhere it was roulette, but I think that must be incorrect. But I just thought it was cute even as a little cap, just the little graphics and it had French on it. Um, this little uh, tea kettle, I had written down who made it and I don't know what I did with the piece of paper. Uh, actually it was two different names, but it's pretty easy to find if you Google like tea kettle with hummingbird and tulips. Um, so I apologize. Um, it might be Via Acona. And then there was another name associated with it that was German. Um, and this is like a 60 or $70 teapot. I've never seen it before. I got it at a yard sale. I always follow what Mike Wolf says. If you've never seen it before, you have to buy it. It wasn't expensive, so it was not a big risk. And so I did snatch that up. Um, this was probably my favorite thing that I bought. Look at this guy. He's like a wooden horse, like marionette type puppet. And the woman said she bought him many years ago in like a craft or antique shop in Virginia somewhere. And she was in love with him and I was in love with him and he's stylized in the perfect way. You know, he really captures the essence of a horse. So I just loved him. I don't know who made him. It's not signed or anything, so it's hard to price at this point. Um, but I will look into him a little bit more. I'm trying to think if there was anything I forgot about. I guess, you know, I wasn't able to give you all the prices because I just picked up a lot of this stuff yesterday. And when I come back, you know, when you're a part-time reseller, you go back into your regular life. You know, the dishes and the vacuuming and the kids and the dog and stuff. So you can't always research all of your items right away. Um, but this piece, um, this bohemian like crochet piece, I would probably sell locally for 25. It might sell for twice as much online, but you do have to ship it. Um, let me see if there are any other pieces I think I missed. The glass is already addressed, I'm not sure. The floral frogs sell really well, whether they're glass or metal, and they're great for displaying things. If you have a shop where you just like to display unique things in your home, I don't know if you can use this one for other things. Maybe you could use that for toothbrushes or pencils or something, makeup brushes. But those are really good, like I said, for postcards and photos and things like that. So this is probably about a third of what I was able to find in the last three days. Um, I was exhausted yesterday. I also set up a new booth uh, in Ellicott City, uh, the historic portion of Ellicott City at Antique Depot. Um, they're open daily from 10.30 to 6. You can head down there and check it out. Um, that's another way you can support, you know, small local businesses and help me grow. But don't forget to like and subscribe. Please share with your friends. Please share the video. It helps so, so much. Um, and we hope that uh, you'll tune in again soon. I'm trying to do a few videos a week. 
Um, and most importantly, never stop searching. Bye.